Hey good folks, I'm doing my gardening work and I'm shooting this with my phone so this was all very very impromptu. Sometimes you can get very very lucky and let me show you how. Most places if you live sort of in a community have a dumping site. Now does anyone see anything you could make cool things out of? Uh-huh, I thought so too. Hey good folks, my name is Leif and I want to welcome you to my channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint miniatures or craft awesome terrain for the tabletop. Today I'm going to show you how I took some roots and made this gnarly looking gallows tree. Now before we get onto it, I want to make two announcements. First off, the channel has now over 10,000 subscribers. That is so amazing and I'm so humbled by all of the comments and love I've gotten from you. So thank you very, very much. Now this needs to be celebrated somehow, but how? If you have any ideas, please tell me in the comment section down below. Second of all, I'm going to show you the process of this build, but there is also sort of a special gift later in the video, so be sure to watch all of it. Now with that out of the way, it's time to get it cracking. Now the first thing I needed to do was to cut the root to become more manageable. For this I used this saw which I got from Army Painter. And it actually cuts very fine, so I could even cut, like you can see here, very sort of, I guess, cute angles and whatnot. And you might be asking, why would you cut like that, Leif? Well, when you look at it, it makes the offshoot just look so much more natural. Once I found a place that I felt like this was a good place for this offshoot, I simply use my vice drill and drill a hole in both the branch and in the actual main part of the tree. Just like any other pinning, I'm going to be using paper clips that I've bent to a straight and I will secure these using some super glue. Now, one thing to uh, make sure of is it's good to have an activator at home if you're doing this because it's going to get a little bit messy. Now, once I have the branch where I want it, I just push it in place and then I take the activator and I start spraying it around a little bit just so I can get it to at least adhere to the branch a little bit. Then, just to be double damn sure, I actually uh, used some more super glue and just sort of covered the seam. Now, this I did for quite a long time and, you know, bit by bit or branch by branch, it started looking more and more like an old withered tree. I recommend to keep gameplay uh, in mind during this process as well as the artistic side. I'm using a old base from Whiskids because I had it lying around and I even put some roots down and put some very basic basing on the actual ground floor. Here you can see I'm bulking up the actual base of a tree because it looked a little bit wonky. Then I covered everything with a little bit of diluted glue. Now it was messy so I had to use the magic snap. Sorry, it's a secret every YouTuber has. Now, to make sure that this looks like one whole tree and not just a bunch of glued together branches or roots, my secret recipe, which you would have seen me use in my birch tree video, is to use PVA glue or white glue and a bunch of fine sand. It's really not that difficult or that expensive. So this is a cheap way to get a nice paste and I've actually used this on multiple things just to get a nice texture. Now here comes the trick. First off you want to just you know cover the entire tree with it but as you cover the tree with it go back let the PVA glue set ever so slightly and then you take your brush and you stipple it again. Now since the glue has set a little bit it will actually maintain that texture much better than if you only did it once. Because if you only did it once, the PVA glue and gravity would smoothen it out way too much. 
so it's a sort of a two-step rocket, so to speak. But it looks quite nice in the end. And as you can see, once it dries, you can see the sort of hint of an actual tree and not just a bunch of branches or roots glued together. Now the first part of painting this tree is of course to priming it, and I went with my airbrush and a black primer. Then I zenithal primed this, and I was hoping to be able to get a quite dramatic light and shadow relation. And then I went in with different washes, different brown inks and whatnot, but honestly I think I at this point felt that the brown was too powerful, it covered the highlights too much. So I'm, here I'm actually going back in with acrylic paints and I'm redoing the zenithal. Now on top of this I want to pick out all of those nice details that we got when texturing this. So I'm dry brushing the entire tree with various colors to be honest. Similar to rock, I think that trees are much more interesting if they have more than just brown colors. Put some grays in there. Put some greens in there. Put some, you know, even purples. It will make it look cool. Now, to bind all of this together, I am coming in with my homemade black wash, which will sort of unify everything and make it look like one tree. Okay, so the tree was somewhat done, but I wanted to go darker than I'd ever gone before. For me, the inspiration came from these two scenes and these two movies, Excalibur. And the fantasy-inspired saga of Willow. Don't! There's a, a pack here with an acorn pointed at me! So I needed some models. I managed to find some morbid models of hanged folks and some crows. In addition to this, I knew I wanted some cages with skeletons trapped inside of them. And I, for the love of me, could not find any good models of this. So I had to call in a favor from my friend Andy over at Sinnerds. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Andy. I, I need some skeletons inside some cages. Yeah, I'm sure I could come up with something. <laughs> Excellent. You have a good one. And wow, did Andy ever come through. Just look at these nice cages and skeletons. Now, Andy over at Synerds gave these to me to actually give to you. So links to the models can be found in the description below, along with all of the socials for sinners. So please return the favor and show Andy some love. Now with these models, it was time to print them with my new love, my Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. Now I covered this in last week's video, but I really, really love this 3D printer. It's so simple to just, you know, find the models you want and print them. And in a couple of hours, you're good to go. The models, of course, are primed, and these characters I'm actually going to zenithal. Uh, the crows, I primed these in black as well, and I dry brushed them off camera just to get some interesting highlights. These characters, I uh, zenithal them, and then I'm using off camera, I think it was different washes and inks just to get them done as quickly as possible. Now you can see with these small crows there, the details are exquisite and the same for these cages and skeletons. Andy really knocked it out of the park in my opinion. Now meanwhile, I had to start thinking about how would I actually, you know, string these up and the answer was in that expression. I would use some sort of string. But in order to get contrast, I actually colored this using hemp rope from Army Painter, and then I used some washes just to dirty it down. Now, Army Painter also sent me a while back some of their airbrush colors or prototypes of them. Luckily, one of the triad colors I got was a bone color, so I used this for all of the skeletons. Once all of the skeletons had been painted, it was the painstaking uh, job to paint these cages. 
And I did that using rough iron and gunmetal gray, just stippling it just to make it look nice and dirty. Now, as you can see in the background, I am watching, not Pretty Woman per se, but a documentary about the movies that made us on uh, Netflix. Very interesting stuff. Now, stringing these folks up, I needed something to actually fasten them by. So I just bent some aluminium wire into a loop and I super glued that into the actual stem of the tree. Now, as you can see, I am super gluing these ropes in as many points as possible. So up there at the branch where they overlap each other, I super glue them just to have as many connections as possible where it's, uh, you know, glued down. With the loop there, I figured I would loop the wire around. It was a little bit fiddly, but easily done with some tweezers. And then once that is tight, you just secure that with some super glue. And this super glue is actually easy flowing, so I, I recommend it because it goes into the actual textile of the string. At this point, you can really start to see the grim dark I'm going for. But I felt like, grimdark or not, there was not enough contrast or visual variation. So I made a paste using some PVA glue and some moss and different flocks, just to sort of get some moss on the tree. And at this point, I think it's time to have a look at the final result. Alright folks, that's it! I hope you liked this grim dark build. If you did, then please feel free to smash, click, like, you know, subscribe, all of that stuff. You know this by now. Uh, all of that helps the channel out. But of course, the best way to keep me making content is to pledge a few dollars over at my Patreon. Joining will give you access to my private Discord server, where we have a great community of supportive and creative people that try to challenge each other and help each other out. And on that note, I of course want to extend uh, gratitude to my patrons. So thank you so much andrew cummings brandon get the shooter michael milligan nicholas o'sullivan ryan lewis baron de rop shane murphy stephen jarvis sunny headcase blake crowl boo all gideon chris Grop, Volker Göller. And a special shout out goes out to my champion and legend level patrons Chris Sagers, 4VXP, Madners, Magnus Solberg, Rosen Graveyard, Niklas Swedenlind, and Leander. Thank you so much, my fellow patrons. I'm sorry, I probably mispronounced half of your names, but I had a little bit of fun with it. To everyone watching this, stay safe. I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, and this one is for you, Blake. Toodaloo.